Okay, guys, uh, this kind of order story is really interesting. It does feel a little bit like we've talked before about how um, what the right does is they criticize the government and they say government doesn't work. And then they get in government and they pass policy that breaks the government. And then they step back and they say, see, told you it didn't work. This kind of, remember, this guy, these have been saying, uh, this government's been criticizing the last lot for not building houses and the promises they made, this, that, and the other thing. And they get in and they make an order to stop building houses. And it's it's just a bizarre time. And th there's a really interesting interaction, which I'll play to you from an RNZ story from yesterday, where the chair also, oh, there we go. The chair also um, disagrees with the Prime Minister, but doesn't realise he's disagreeing with the Prime Minister. It's very, very funny, actually. Do you want to read that out? I can't really see the words, people who are listening on the audio podcast. Okay, so it's a, a little graph of a Domino's game. First mm -hmm. domino, reduce the budget of public services. Then further along, elimination of po positions in public services because their budgets have been reduced. Then complain about the decline in quality and efficiency of public services. There you go then claim that the degradation of public services is proof of government inefficiency, and so privatisation is now needed. And then the go. last domino to fall, which coincidentally squashes the person, yeah. is to privatise. So this is, this is the cycle that we must always be aware of when the right wing comes to power. So the, uh, the third one in, that's probably where we're at right now, whatever that third one was. What's the third one? Complain about the decline in quality and efficiency of public service. And this is where the uh, new uh, chief executive, or whatever his name is, uh, of the board um, disagrees with the prime minister, but doesn't realise he's disagreeing. It's quite funny, but let's get the story first of all, and then we'll go to that audio. Tēnā tātou katoa. Good evening. There's concern in the construction industry. Tradies will be forced out of business because of the government's revamp of kainga order. News Hub can reveal that construction of 3,000 consented homes is now under review, while a new board comes up with a plan to turn... She forgot to do okay, the air quotes. What? She forgot to... specifically under review, which means they're not going to do them. Here yeah, they go. 3,000 homes. Well, the last, uh, the last section, the last term of the Labour government, they built 12,000 homes, yeah? There are 4,000 set to go for this year. That's their 16,000 target, Right. Yet this government is cancelling this year's builds. Have a listen. Turn around the state housing provider. As business correspondent Simon Shepard reports, that plan isn't due until November. And guess what happens when they cancel building of houses? Guess who loses out, Chewy? You know all those ute drivers that rather than carrying a sheep, they carry a hammer and a saw? All those friends of the national government who got their ute tax you know, given back to them, they all get screwed over when this government cancels all those houses being built. All of those people that went through uh, Labor's apprenticeship program. Yep. Just yep. in time for them to, to go into the workforce, their work dries up and they go yep. to Australia. Yep. But, but a lot of them would have voted for this lot to get their ute tax put back in the, uh, the too hard shelf. Mm. It's the biggest home builder in New Zealand. Right now, Kainga Ora has work underway on almost 5,300 homes. Yeah. But it's what happens next that has the construction industry worried. We're not getting enough clear signals from the government about when that's going to change and pick up. And, and we're going to see a lot more construction companies at risk of going to the wall if they, if they can't get the work that they've been getting over the last few years. That's because Kainga Ora itself is being renovated. A review led by Sir Bill English said the board should be refreshed and a turnaround review. plan put... Again, yeah, my exact words. It's hard when you're doing a voiceover to do the air quotes, but that we should always think about that as the review, 100%. ...in place. As a result, News Hub can reveal thousands of consented homes are in limbo. As at the end of May, 833 consented homes due to be built by July next year are being reviewed to see whether they are value for money. Yeah. Another 2,168 consented homes due to be built after July next year have been paused. So, 3,000 homes. And let oh, me damn. just tell you, this just makes it feel like the theory conversation over all over again. They're reviewing 833 to see if they're value for money. Do you think they're going to be cheaper in two, three or four years? Do you think that building yesterday is the best value you're going to get for building a house? 
so it's just all excuses. It's all making noise. It's all excuses. We know where they're going. We know. That means no contracts being signed on 3,000 homes. A blow when the construction industry is already reeling from the recession. In some ways, the indecision or the pause at Kaingora is actually contributing to the uh, recessionary effect on the construction sector. Housing Minister Chris Bishop has indicated private community housing providers ah. could play a greater role, allocating $140 million in this year's budget. And in the last six years, that sector has built 2,000 homes. We're match fit, we're good to go, um, and I feel confident. So look, are these guys are great. These community service providers, they're great. No criticism. I mean, it's Salvation Army, those for, for, for supplying houses. But what this means is the government is going to give these guys money who are then going to build houses, who then these community groups will own those houses, rather than getting the government to build the houses to then have an asset on your book government to have a government and our well, you know all of our assets be worth more as a country it just doesn't make any sense remember they've been complaining about the 10 billion dollars worth of debt that kind of order you know came up with in the last section well yeah but for that they got 25 billion dollars worth of houses 10 billion 10 million sorry 10 million wasn't it i'm, I'm lost with my words now mm. and and what it means is now we're going to give the money to someone else and their charity, or their, you know, I don't want to criticise them, but they're going to be the ones that get that asset on their ledger books, not us, not the citizens. So it doesn't seem to make any sense as to why they think the community groups should be doing it and not Kainga Order. So the community groups will do it, then Kainga Order will pay the community groups to house the people, rather than it being their own house which they're housing them in. Just why? It makes no logical sense at all, other than government shouldn't be building buildings that's about that that's about as deep as you can go on yeah that. yeah yeah. but yeah. but no they deeper because it makes no sense they can see the cost they don't see the value yeah that's a very good thing Joey. that might be a t-shirt they, they they build the houses they give them to someone else they, they'll they'll palm off those responsibilities to those organizations and then they'll say that they don't need those people in kayang or yeah. You know, the, I guarantee the next fucking thing on the chopping block, Pat, I would bet the farm on this, accommodation supplements. Now, mm. that, that'll put the cat amongst the pigeons because there's a lot of private landlords that like to make their profit sheets look nice and fat and charge full market rent for yeah. absolute rat holes yeah, because they know that the tenants that are, that are being sent their way will get their rent that's topped up by the accommodation supplement. All so right. I I, th I think National is going to take a swing at that and that's going to piss off the landlords. All right, we'll keep going. I don't that we can deliver particularly those 1,500 new places that were announced in the budget. But with Kainga Order having 80% share of the social housing market, any pause in building is a big problem. For a couple of years now, residential construction consents and activity have been in a very, very steep decline. And we've been arguing with the ministers of housing that there is a role for the government to step in because we're really worried how deep that decline is going to go. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Development says Kainga Order is due to put forward a priority plan soon. So, Simon, what... So, that's, this is what they've got. I've got another clip from you that I'm going to play from TVNZ story as well. Because we're talking about what, what is the main thing a government should do, right? And I think is like the safety and security of its citizens. That would be the top thing. Keeping them safe, keeping them healthy, keeping them secure. That would be the number one thing. Let's have a look at what the, the instructions that the BISH is now giving to the new board of Kainga Order. You ready? The government today announced six new board members for Kaying Order and gave them a letter of expectation. Cut your costs, operate efficiently and effectively and focus on your core functions of being a landlord for vulnerable people in need. A Cut your costs, operate efficiently. So at no point did the minister who is in charge of the sector looking after the most vulnerable people list as number one make sure your people are okay. That should be number one. Make sure these vulnerable people are safe and housed. His number one is cut your fucking costs. Number one priority 
when talking to a government agency dealing with the most vulnerable people in the country and trying to get them into housing. Cut your costs. Number one, Joey. Do, do you remember what I said last week about the role of government in tough times and in, in, in recession and in depression? Yeah. That's when you open up the purse, purse strings and go on an infrastructure fucking binge. Yeah. Build those houses. Yeah, make those roads, because, get those ferries. Because, A, you're going to prop up the economy. You're going to make sure all of these builders and tradies have work coming through. Fantastic. They'll spend that money in the economy. They'll pay the GST. It's, it's, it's all fucking good. You know, and then... And then, yeah, as you said, the, the second thing is, okay, board, new board of Kayanga Aura, here's your thing. Every day you go to get your lunch, walk through the CBD. Are there still people living in doorways? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's your job, is, to make sure there's there none still, of those. Is there still a tent city in the city oval? Cool. Keep building houses until they're gone. Yeah. That's that's my expectations. Great. That's really so good, Joey. I can get in there. Yep. I'm voting for you. Are we all voting for him, Farno? Everyone voting for Joey for we, we can you can be dictator to dictator for one day. Dictator for one day. That's what Trump says, and you can be dictator I'll, for one day. I'll, I'll fix everything. Let me let me play something else that's gonna I, I look, this is actually really serious, but I know it's gonna cause you to have a bit of a giggle. But it's actually really serious. I <laughs> think all the votes coming in. <laughs> can I be your first lady? Can that be me? <laughs> no? Oh, no, that might be uh, your wife grumpy. Uh, I know your wife's oh. already grumpy about it. Yeah, no, I'll stop. I'll stop. Um, so I want to play for you a conversation that Kayang orders new chief exec, the new chief of the board, the, if that's the right word, this guy here, chief exec. Oh, no, that's the executive board. He's the, um, the chair of the new board. He's just been put in a month ago. So he's appointed by this government. Um, he has said a few things. I assume there would have been a phone call after this. But have a listen to what he had to say about how Kainga Order is operating. See if you can know the difference between how what the the Luxon appointed chair says about Kainga Order versus Kainga Order as wants to be explained by Luxon. And in a moment, did you try to get him to stay? Do you think he's the right person to be leading uh, Kainga Order? So that's order? the chief executive who retired. I think it's always a con to say when you've been in a role for eight years, like Andrew has, he's done a very good job over that eight years, made an enormous difference to the organisation. You know, this year, for example, Kainga Order will deliver 4,000 uh, uh, new build houses. That's a that didn't age very well, did it? Kainga Order will deliver 4,000 houses this year, he said. Pretty amazing achievement. and oh, so, But it's amazing. But, you know, he, he has a right to consider whether he's up for another round. And uh, and I think together we had to decide whether he's up for a, uh, for another going another round. And, and I need a leader in place who's fully committed to the new narrower dimensions of Kainga Order. So we came to the conclusion that it was his his time was ready to to move on and go and do something new in his career okay. and, and you know carrying or we'll get a new leader you say that they've done an amazing job yep. the prime minister describes uh, it as chronically underperforming so uh -oh. who's right there uh oh well look I, i'm not arguing with the prime minister on that i'm just saying that actually there's you know the, the ceo has has done a good job and carrying oh. or it is an incredible achievement to have built oh. that many new homes in this market over the last year and oh, many thousands of the year prior as well. So well, with respect, that is arguing with the Prime issue. Minister yeah. because you can't be chronically <laughs> underperforming, <clears throat> excuse me, and also doing a great job. You're in there. Well, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been in there for a month um, and I've seen some good things and I've seen some things that... And as we speak, my butthole is puckered. Can we stop? ...need uh, some work and, uh, and my job is... Uh, to deliver a new plan for the organisation in November this year, and I'm putting together a new board to help me with that. Uh, and we're underway, and in November we'll clarify what we think the organisation should look like going forward, and we'll solve the issues that have that have been called out, particularly particularly the financial sustainability of the business that is threatened by the growing uh, amount of debt. Sure. So, the um, the chair of the board, the new chair of the board, Simon Matter, says that. Kaing Ora is doing a fantastic job, a great job, a really impressive job. 
but we're being told by the Prime Minister that they're underachieving and they're not doing well. So who's telling the truth? Later on in that same show, they got to ask Mr Luxon the same question based on the inconsistencies of answers. Mr Muta says that Kainga Order has been doing an amazing job. Well, um, there's, I'm sure there's bits that they are doing well, but uh, we're also very clear about what we want to see improved. And that is, uh, we've talked about that. We've put a review in there. Yeah, by Sir Bill English, we've changed the chair and we've yeah. changed the board. No, what, what, he yeah, said, what he said was that they were doing an amazing job of building houses. Yeah, well, they do. I mean, they support 75,000 families or people from memory uh, in there, and, and they've got a $45 billion asset portfolio. So all I'm saying to you is um, we're very clear about what our expectations of KO are. Uh, yeah. The new chair is as well. Um, he's going to do a great job, uh, and he'll build a great team there, which will do I'm fantastic just, work. I'm just wondering how those two things can be true. If they're doing an amazing job, uh, someone who you respect says they're doing an amazing job, you say that they're chronically underperforming. So how do those things match up? Well, I'm sure the people are doing an amazing job. They need to be clear on their strategy, and that's what we want to see as a new strategy that has a turnaround plan that deals with their... The one question right now should have been... Fucking What's hell. wrong with the current strategy? Expand yeah. that for us. What's wrong with the current strategy Strategy that the chair of the board says is giving amazing results? Get challenges that deals with their asset management challenges, that deals with their involvement and consultation with the communities uh, and the things that we've talked about and highlighted in the review when we've appointed the new chair. So, you know, we're very aligned on all of that. But let's be clear, there are great people doing great jobs across the whole public service. It's a question of making sure that actually the sum of all of that... I mean, I've been shitting on them the entire time. Sure. From New Zealand as well. Well, yeah, so there you go. So, uh, yeah, someone didn't get the memo about you need to crap on Kaying or order, please. We're going to crap on you? No, we're not going to crap on you. Um, yeah, I wonder if that involved a bit of a phone call between the two gentlemen after Mr. Luxon got off the phone. How dare you undermine me? Probably not. I don't I don't find him to be a very con confronting person. I find him to be more a shout things out from the side and then run away. So I suspect now, that phone call probably didn't happen. Now, look, I'll be very clear. Uh, and, and, and what I'd like to say to you is that uh, Gang Aura um, uh, is both a dreadfully run, horrible money suck of an organisation that needs to be put up against a wall and shot, but simultaneously is full of good, hardworking people doing an excellent job. I think I've been very clear about this.